The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD available from SDC Publications. In this video we're going to add the top view of the tool slide. We're going to start by drawing a rectangle that would enclose the entire top view so that rectangle would be 6.25 inches by 3 inches so let's put that in here right now. First thing I need to do is make sure that I'm back on the visible layer because the last thing I was doing in the front view is putting in center line so I'm going to make visible my current layer. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and when I'm prompted for the first corner I'm going to pick at this corner and I'm going to move in the direction I want to go and I know that the first length along the x-axis is 6.25 comma but because I'm going to be moving down in this direction right here I'm going to have to type minus 3 and press enter. So it looks like that went in the right place there. So let's add another feature. We have a chamfer and this chamfer you can see it right here. If we project a line up from this corner we're going to have a line going all the way across and if we project one from this corner we'll have a line going all the way across. So let's just pick on the line command and come down here to this corner and put our mouse there until it says endpoint. Then we're going to follow the dotted line up and we're going to pick for the first time right here at this intersection and we'll pick right here at that perpendicular. Now you would think I would do the same thing over here but I intend to do a something a little bit quicker. I'm going to mirror that line over to this side in a, in a couple of minutes here after I add some other things. We have two holes that are going to be visible in the top view and they have a diameter of 0.875. You can see this note says 2x which means two times diameter 0.875. So there's going to be a hole here, there's going to be a hole here, the diameter is 0.875. The location of those holes is from the edge one inch over and then from the front edge 1.5 inch in. So we're going to use the from option to draw those and since we know the diameter let's go up to this uh, circle tool and make sure we've chosen center diameter. Now it's asking us for the center point and we can come up here and we can pick this object snap tool if we have the object snap toolbar open. This is the from tool or we can just type FROM and press enter and then we're prompted for a base point so we're going to pick right here. Now I said that we need to come in one inch and then go up one and a half but if we're starting here and coming in one inch then that's going to be in a negative X direction but a positive Y. So remember the key here is to type the at symbol and then type minus 1 comma 1.5 and press enter and now we're prompted for that diameter which is 0.875 and press enter. Press escape. Now I need one of those over here on the other side but again I'm going to mirror this feature and that circle to the opposite side and just save some time. All right. If I were to project a line up from this edge and came all the way across, that would represent this edge in the top view. So let's do that. We'll pick on the line command. We'll come to right there. We'll acquire that point. We're going to come straight up to here, pick there, come right up to there and pick and then press escape. All right. So now let's mirror all these features to the opposite side over here. Select the mirror command. When, in, when you're asked to select objects, pick this line, pick that circle, and pick that line, and then that's all the things we need to select, so we need to press enter. Now it asks us for the first point of the mirror line. The first point of the mirror line should be the midpoint along this front edge right here. We're going to pick right there, and then it asks for the second point of the mirror line, and we're going to come right up there and snap to the midpoint over here on this side and pick right there. Then we have an option of yes or no. We just want to pick on no and then press escape. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, we just need a couple of visible lines and some hidden lines across and some center lines. We'll have this top view finished. So let's add these two visible lines that come across right here. And to do that, we're going to pick on the line command. And this time, we're going to use the temporary track point tool. Now, if you don't have your object snap toolbar open you can just type TT and press enter or you can pick on this tool so the key is to pick on the line command and then type TT and press enter come over here to this 
point right there and just put your mouse there until it says endpoint and then follow the dotted line straight up and pick at that intersection then follow the dotted line straight across and when you get to the first line where there's an intersection once you pick there come straight across and pick again and then press escape so look at that we were able to project from this side up to the miter line and across let's do that again we're going to pick on the line command this time I'm just going to use the temporary track point icon. If you don't have that, just type TT and press enter. But I'm going to pick on the temporary track point icon. I'm going to come to that corner, put my mouse there until it says endpoint, follow the dotted line up, pick right here for the first time, come across, pick here, follow it across, and pick again, and press escape. All right, so that gives me this slot. Now. I'm going to have a hidden edge for this edge of the circle and this edge of the circle. I'm going to project them up and across as well. So I'm going to change over to the hidden layer. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick on my line command and I'm going to pick temporary track point. I'm going to come over here and find that quadrant. And remember, I'm not going to pick. I'm just going to park there until it says quadrant. I'm going to follow the dotted line up. Pick here. Follow it across. Pick there this intersection pick again and there's my hidden line I want to do that again except this time I'm going to go to the quadrant on this side of the circle follow that up pick follow that across there's my first pick at that red line across to that red line right there and press escape now the last thing I need to put in here is a center line that would be halfway between these two red lines here so I'm going to change to my center layer, pick on that, pick on my line command, choose TT again or temporary track point, go to the end point of that center line, follow it straight up, pick at the intersection, follow that across, pick at the visible line, come across, pick at the perpendicular on the opposite side and press escape. Now what I need to do is extend both of those lines out 0.25. So I'm going to pick on that, I'm going to pick and hold down on that first grip and then holding down I'm going to drag my mouse to the right. I'm going to type point .25 and press enter. I'm going to pick at this end, hold down with the pick button, drag to the left, type point .25 and press enter. And then press escape. Now I need the center lines for these two holes so I'm going to come over and pick on my center mark tool. I'm going to pick on the edge of that circle. I'm going to pick right here and pick on the edge of that circle there as well. Now I'm going to have to extend all those out 0.25. So let me show you a quick way to do that. You can do your offset command. Pick on offset. When it asks for the offset distance, type 0.25 and press enter. Then pick on this circle and move out like that. Pick on this circle, move outside of it and pick again and press escape. Come up here and behind the trim command, if you pick on the down arrow, you'll find extend. So after you pick on extend, press enter. Then you just need to come in here and pick at the endpoints of those green lines and they will extend out to that circle that we just offset 0.25. So I pick there, pick here, pick there. Then I'm going to press escape. Now I'm going to pick those two circles because those were just construction circles that I offset 0.25 so I could extend these lines out to them and pick escape, um, erase. All right, so the next thing we need to do is put our hidden lines in into the front view here and we'll also project the hidden lines over into this view as well so let's go back and make hidden our current layer we'll pick on the line command and we just want to come over here and just park right there at the quadrant follow it down we're going to pick at this intersection and pick at this perpendicular and then press escape do the same thing pick on the line command come over here find the quadrant follow the dotted line down and this is your first pick is here and then pick at the perpendicular and press escape now let's go back and put this on the center line again or the center layer and pick on the line command and we're just going to park right here project straight down from our center line we're going to pick here and pick here and press escape now what I want to do on this one I'm going to pick on this I'm going to pick and hold down and drag it straight up and type .25 and press enter. I'm going to pick on this end, drag it straight down, holding with my pick button, then let go and type .25 and press enter and press escape. Now you can see even though I've extended that out, I don't see any dashed lines in that. 
That's because something called the line type scale is set at a scale that does not show any gaps in my non-continuous lines when that center line is only this long. So what I'm going to do is type LTS, that stands for line type scale, and then just press enter. And you can see it says enter a new line type scale and, and my default scale says 1. So I'm going to type by, I'm going to start by typing 0 0.75. I'm going to go for a smaller value and press enter. Now I saw some changes in these, but I didn't see a change in that. If you press enter again, it will bring you back to the LTS scale. So next I'm going to try something slightly smaller. I'm going to type 0 0.625 and press enter. And that time, my scale is small enough that I'm getting breaks in that center line. Now, LTS is a global scale, which means it's going to affect the size of center marks and in other non-continuous lines, but still everything looks okay. All right, I'll bet you figured out what I'm going to do. I need one of these hidden, hidden holes over here on this side, and so the way I'm going to do that is using the mirror command. Pick on mirror, and this time I can either pick these separately or I can pick a window that would completely enclose both hidden lines and the center line. Just pick like that. Now, it says select objects. It thinks I may still want to select more objects to mirror, but I don't. So I'm going to press enter. When it asks for the first point of my mirror line, I'm going to pick at the midpoint on this red line here. When it asks for the second point, I'm going to pick at the midpoint on the bottom line. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick no, and then press escape. So now I have my hidden lines. The last hidden lines I need are going to be right over here. So center is still my current layer, so let's add the center line for the hole where it will go through over here. I'm going to pick on the line command, and I could pick here, or I could type TT and press enter. And I would come to the endpoint until it says, just park there until it says endpoint, follow the dotted line across, pick at the miter line, I want to follow that straight down, and at that point I'm going to pick, oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong line. Let's do that again. I'm going to pick, type TT, and enter. This is the center line I want to park on. So I'm going to wait until it tells me it has the endpoint. Follow that across. I'm going to pick at that intersection. Follow this down. I'm going to pick here, and I'm going to pick there. And uh, you know the routine here. We're going to pick on that. We're going to pick and hold down, drag it up, and type point .25 and press enter. Pick on here, hold down with the pick button, drag it down, let go of my mouse, type point .25, and press enter. And now all I need are those two uh, hidden lines. Now, I can project those hidden lines. First, I would just go up here and go to the hidden layer. Pick on that. Pick the line command, and come right there where my, it's saying a midpoint, but I, I know that's actually my quadrant. And uh, once it tells me that, I should be able to follow that across and pick. Follow that straight down, pick and pick. Oh, something didn't work right. Let's try that again. I don't think I picked right. I'm going to pick on the line command, pick temporary track point. I think that's what I forgot. I'm going to park right there again, follow that across. There we go. Pick, follow that down, pick and pick right here and press escape. And that gives me the hidden line on that side. Pick on the line command type TT and enter or pick on the temporary track point. This time find that quadrant, follow your dotted line across pick, follow it down, pick again, pick right there, and there you go, I've got that in there. Now one of the things I could have done a minute ago, I'm going to erase these two hidden lines out, is this. <clears throat> Get rid of that one. Once I knew where this center line is, I could have actually used the copy command. This is the copy command right here. It's also located right up here. If I pick on copy and it says select objects and I pick this hidden line and I pick this hidden line and then I press enter, I'm prompted for a base point. And if I were to pick right there at the intersection of my center line and my visible line, I could pick right there. I could come over here and I could, when it asked me to specify my second point, I could pick right at the intersection of the center line and the visible line and pick right there and press escape and it would have copied those two holes, the edges of those holes, those hidden lines over there as well. And since they're the same diameter in the front view as they are in the right side view, that would have been <coughs> worked out just as well. 
All right, so I'm reviewing my drawing now, trying to make sure that I haven't missed anything. And uh, I may come back in and have to fine tune a few things later. In chapter five, you're going to reopen this drawing and add dimensions. And at that time, you may want to turn your, your miter layer off. And you may even need to move your views a little bit further apart so that you can add the dimensions. But your instructor can help you with that in chapter five.